starting with EKS version 123, you have to additionally install Amazon EBS driver before you can attach volumes to your pods. You have two options here. You can install it as EKS add-on, which is recommended way, or you can install it manually, which may be useful if you deploy and manage Kubernetes yourself in AWS. In this video, we'll use the recommended approach. When you deploy CSI driver, it creates a controller that is responsible for communicating with AWS API to request volumes and EBS CSI node agent deployed on each node. For example, when you create a stateful set, the EBS controller will request a volume. Then EBS will attach a volume to the Kubernetes node. And EBS CSI node agent is responsible for linking your pod with that volume. Let's take a look at the code. As always, I will use Terraform to create EKS cluster and deploy EBS CSI driver. We have a VPC, internet gateway, subnets, and other components. EKS cluster, which I call demo, and the EKS nodes. In addition, we need to create OpenID Connect provider to use IAM roles for service accounts. The first step to install EBS driver is to grant necessary permissions for the driver to allocate EBS volumes. When you use EKS add-on to deploy the driver, the service account name is always EBS CSI controller SA, and it will be deployed in the cube system namespace. This policy only allows pods with this service account to use granted permissions. Now let's create the empty I'm role and use that trust relationship policy. For the first example, we will only grant permissions to the EBS by attaching Amazon EBS CSI driver policy to our role. In the second part, in case you use your own AWS KMS key to encrypt EBS volumes, we'll add additional policy. Now when you use Terraform to install EKS add-ons, you need to use a special Terraform resource. Here you specify EKS cluster and the desired version of the add-on. Keep in mind that you would need to upgrade those add-ons yourself. EKS won't do that for you, but it's easy as update the version and apply Terraform. Also, we need to associate IAM role that we just created with the Kubernetes service account that the EBS driver will use in the pod. In case you're wondering how to find available versions for the EBS driver, you can run EKS describe add-on version and specify the add-on that you want to install. Here you can see available version. Now let's initialize and apply Terraform. Then update the local Kubernetes context and list the pods in the cube system namespace. We have two replicas of the controller and CSI node agent that will be deployed on each node. In this cluster, we have only a single node. Next, let's test the setup by deploying stateful set. You can also just create a persistent volume claim if you want. EBS only allows to attach a volume to a single pod at a time. In one of the following videos, I'll show you how to use EFS file system and create read write many volumes. Let's apply the stateful set. Now you can see that the pod is running, which means that the volume was successfully allocated. You can also get a PVC. In case of the error, you'll see pending, but here we have a bound state. To debug, you can describe the PVC and find necessary error messages if you have any issues. Let's clean up before the second example. Let's delete the stateful set as well as manually delete the PVC object. The following example covers the use case when you use your own symmetric KMS key to encrypt data at rest. I already created a key. I didn't grant permissions to use this key to anyone just yet. Now to enable EBS volume encryption, go to EC2 dashboard and click EBS encryption. Let's enable it and select our KMS key. By doing so, you will force any new EBS volumes to be encrypted using your KMS key. To grant additional permissions, let's go back to Terraform. This is additional policy, but you must replace the KMS key IRN with yours. The first is the policy, and the second Terraform resource is to attach that policy to the EBS driver's IAM role. Now we can apply the Terraform again. Let's again create the same stateful set. It's running, which means it also got a requested EBS volume. And we have the persistent volume claim. 
In case of issues, you can also get logs from one of the controllers to get the error message. From my experience using Kubernetes, knowing where to find error messages is a useful skill. Well, here we don't really have any errors. In the AWS console, you can make sure that the EBS volume is encrypted using your own KMS key. If you want to learn more about how to expose applications using ALB controller, you can watch this video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.